don't want to sit here and come across like a doom and gloomer because it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. But the reality is AEW's future doesn't look so bright. That doesn't mean that I'm foreshadowing in the next three to five years that they will cease operations. Let me be clear here. I am not saying that. What I am saying, however, is that if some of the indicators and some things don't change in the months ahead, the downward trajectory is only going to continue and it's going to be worse. And as a result, AEW could feel like quite a different company, even what it does from right now. I wish this wasn't true, but it feels like AEW and principally Tony Khan are fumbling the bag here. Like I realize you have a number of more notable wrestling media personalities that kind of paint a sunny side up picture or a minimalism of the bad for AEW picture because of loyalty or friendships to people in the company, because of the desire to want to maintain access, the refusal to want to make anybody mad. I don't know what it is, but we got to be honest about this shit. And the reality is, is things are going anything but swimmingly for AEW. And it feels like they're on this perpetual kind of downward trajectory. Like, first off, they're not, there's no way. There's no way. And unless you want to really believe it or buy into it because you want to be that naive or that gullible, there is no way that AEW is turning a profit right now. You'd have to estimate reasonably as probably costing them over the course of the year 200 million, 225, maybe up to 250 million to run their shit. When you think about all the talent contracts, the production costs, the cost of doing shows, all of the things associated, it's probably somewhere between 200 to 250 million is what I would anticipate it would cost that company a year. And when you just look at the revenue that they're generating, you see reports of like in 2023, maybe 150 million, 175 million. They're not making a profit. There's no fucking way. And since they're not a publicly traded entity, it's all guessing and depending upon what you want to believe or not. That's it, right? You don't have the ability to dive deeper into the numbers and be able to do some of that validation. But there is very little to support the belief that AEW is profiting. And that in and of itself isn't a terrible thing because they're still kind of in startup mode. I mean, AEW has been formally a company for a little over four and a half years now. So a lot of startups don't profit in their first few years. That's why so many of them go under. But for those that are well capitalized, they have the ability to do so. If they do it right and they build the foundation and the infrastructure from the beginning like Amazon did. For many years, they either didn't profit or if they did turn a profit, they weren't paying out a dividend. They were reinvesting all of it into infrastructure. You do that up front and you pay off in the long term and you benefit from it in the long term. So just the fact that AEW is losing money or probably losing money, maybe losing money, isn't automatically a reason to throw in the white towel and throw, throw up the white flag and say they just need to give it up because that doesn't have to be the case. I think the concern is, is that they're losing money and they're not really growing the business. They're not growing their business. When you look at dynamite ratings from 2020 to 2024, and I use year over year comparisons for April here. In April of 2020, they were averaging about 696,000 viewers, a 0.25 in the key demo. And you're going to say, well, they're better in April 2024 where they're averaged about 754,000 viewers and their performance in the demo was also a 0.25. Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's only a little bit better. And here's the big thing. Four years ago, they were running up against NXT on Wednesday nights or NXT, I should say, was running up against them because Vince and WWF were WWE, excuse me, were that petty. 
but four years later, they're basically in the same spot in April. And that's compared to four years ago when you had another wrestling show stealing away a portion of the audience. That's not good. When you look at April 2021, they were averaging 975,000 viewers, a 0.35 or so in that key demo. So they've lost about 0.1 in the key in three years, 0.1 in the key demo, and over 220,000 viewers. You can blame cord cutting and all this other crap all you want to. But the reality is, this is not good. All of a sudden, you're going to tell me 20%, 25, 30% of Dynamite's viewers stopped having cable? That's not how any of this shit works. And no, you shouldn't buy that. That's really stupid. And anybody peddling that crap, you should instantly not listen to. What you should listen to is the fact that fewer people are tuning into Dynamite week over week as the months and years progress. So you got a company that continues to fork out a lot of money and, in my opinion, for a diminishing return. And then when you look at AEW, look at Rampage in April of 2024. They averaged 313,000 viewers. They're barely keeping 40% of their Dynamite audience, which is their flagship show, right? For the Friday Night Rampage show. Barely 40%. Collision in April averaged about 503,000 viewers. So maybe you can make the argument that they're retaining two-thirds of their audience. That shit's not good. I don't give a crap what you say. How are you about to spin that? You know, this is, I think, a reflection of the philosophy of Tony Khan and the leadership of AEW. They want to appeal to their smaller niche audience And they don't want to grow and they don't know how to grow and they don't particularly care to grow. And eventually you can only squeeze so much blood out of the fucking turnip. You can only get so much out of them and eventually you'll start to lose them. That's part of why you have to continue to focus on trying to grow your market share, try to grow your customer base, try to grow your audience because people's tastes change over time. I promise you there are a number of people that watched every episode of AEW three, four years ago that won't watch an episode now. And I know that because I'm one of them. Taste change. People change. That's why you want to continue to grow. And there you have seen nothing from this company and Tony Khan in particular that demonstrates that he understands how to grow an audience, how to grow a fan base. He came in with a pretty respectable, sizable wrestling fan base. And he's slowly but surely withering that away. And what's really interesting here is the one piece of business that you could point to for AEW and you say, this is pretty strong and remains kind of strong, is their pay-per-view business. You know, back in 2019, they averaged like 88,000 buys per pay-per-view. 2020, the COVID year, was 92 and a half. Well, you got to 2021, it was 155,000. 2022, 151,000. 2023, with an expanded pay-per-view presence of eight shows, 135,000. I guess not bad. I guess one thing that they do that I give AEW a ton of credit for, they have a this reputation within their fan base of putting on high-quality big event shows, and they convert a large percentage of their television viewing audience into pay-per-view buying customers at 50 bucks a pop. Probably the one thing you can really point to for AEW that suggests like they've got something here. It has a form, it has a something for success for them. But even when you look at that, you say, wait a second. For a company that's supposed to be new and is supposed to be different, they sure are kind of old in terms of their business approach. They lack a great internet distribution. They're basing their business heavily on a pay-per-view model that is dated and antiquated. They spread themselves way too thin like WWE style without having the decades of infrastructure to be able to, to, to be able to support that. And then when you look at their roster, they have a number of names on their roster. Notable former WWE talents to different levels, such as Adam Copeland, Christian Cage, Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, Samoa Joe, Claudio, Pac, Miro, 
FTR, Mercedes Monet, Soraya, and that's just like notable former WWE names, right? And then you sprinkle into the mix people like Will Ospreay and Okada and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, Abushi, Jay White, Juice Robinson. You sprinkle in people on the periphery, the commentators like Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone and Renee Paquette and Taz. And with all of that, their viewership continues to decline. With all of these names they've brought in over the years, the interest continues to wane from a television viewership standpoint. And even more concerning, I think, for the company is the fact that they're not packing asses in the seats like they used to. Running 15,000 seat venues and tarping off two thirds to three quarters of the arena. Not good. And what's really concerning about it is they've thrown so much at so many talents in recent years, which has ballooned and had to explode the operating cost. And what real return are you getting for this? The only thing you could point to, I think, as a real positive is the pay-per-view buy rate. But at some point in time, if you continue to lose viewers to your television product and get fewer and fewer people interested in going to your shows live, eventually that's going to trickle all over to your pay-per-view model where fewer and fewer people are going to feel inclined to want to buy this shit because AEW doesn't give people real reasons to give a fuck. Oh, you got great matches. Okay, and how far does that take you? You're seeing how about far it takes you and it takes you to a place where you can really squeeze the turnip for some of your most hardcore fans, but eventually you start turning them a lot of them off. Is they look at the leadership and they say, I don't know that I want to be bothered with this. The shit that goes on behind the scenes is more interesting than the crap I see on TV. You're trying to force a Jack Perry down everybody's fucking throats. As a top villain, you can't take the fucking villain seriously because of a lot of them feel like weak-ass, whack-ass Disney villains. Like, imagine that. All those names I just mentioned a moment ago. And they can't even average like 700 something thousand viewers on Dynamite each week. Could you have ever imagined somebody being capable of doing that? No, I wouldn't have. And when you look at AEW, you see a television deal that's coming up soon and no news on what that's going to be. Like, who would want to do a big long term deal with Tony Khan and AEW? And maybe somebody will, but I'd be stunned if it's going to come to anywhere near the amount of money that this company needs it to. Like it's time to be worried about AEW's long-term future. Not in terms of them going under or going out of business. Mm, I don't know that that's an immediate threat. But in terms of being a product and a company that kind of gets that stigma of they had their chance and they blew it and now they're kind of rudderless and they don't really know what the hell they're doing and they don't know where they're going. That is certainly possible. When you look at the Dynamite viewership, and I know I'm just focused on this one thing, but it's not nothing, right? When you talk about three years ago in April, they were averaging 975,000 viewers. April of 2024, they're averaging 754,000 viewers. They dropped big in the demo, lost a couple hundred thousand viewers, and that's in three years. There's absolutely nothing to suggest that they couldn't see a continual decline in viewership. And what happens three years from now if you're talking about they're doing a 0.15 in the fucking key demo and they're averaging like 500,000 viewers for Dynamite and now they're drawing 1,500 to 2,000 people in person. And it's not like Tony Khan could just go rush out and sign a bunch of big names. Because he's been there, he's done that many times, and this shit ain't working. All of these big names, by the way, I know I love to say my things about the Young Lions, but for a company that's supposed to be new, a lot of their prominently featured talent sure are a little long on the tooth. Like something dramatically needs to change with this company. 
whether it needs to be Tony Khan's involvement with all the day-to-day -day product and get him the hell out of there and have him focused on the bigger, longer vision things, which is what you should really have with the person at the top. The more they are invested and involved in the day-to-day -day activities, I don't care what anybody says, that's not a good thing. That means shit isn't working the way it's supposed to. If you want to think of Tony Khan as kind of your CEO for AEW, then he should be your chief vision officer, not your chief in the weeds day-to-day -day officer. So I don't know if it's that. I don't know if he needs people that'll tell him, stop doing this stupid shit. If he needs more competent people behind the scenes, like, you know, what, what else are you going to do? The big problem here is that he brings in all these people and then does nothing to follow up on it. Brings in all these people, and then like a Mercedes Monet, whose biggest appeal to fans is her work in the ring, and then you prominently feature in the way that isn't appealing her character work, and in particular her mic work. Like it's like he actively seeks out ways to make these people look as bad as possible, and I know he doesn't. He's trying his best. I fully and confidently believe that Tony Khan is doing his best as he knows how and wants to do better. But shit, homie, this ain't it. This is not it. And there is no easy fix. They've got too many people on the roster that they're paying way too much damn money to get too, way too little in return. What's the vision right now for AEW? Who are they building this company around? You can't tell me. You seriously, legitimately can't tell me. And you can't tell me as somebody like a Swerve Strickland, do you really think they're building the company around him? You would say, well, maybe an MJF. Well, MJF's not there right now. But even beyond that, it's more than just one person. What's the vision? At least you can say with the WWE, you can understand and see the vision. You may not like the vision always. You might not agree with the vision, but you know there's a vision there. I look at AEW and it feels way too much week to week with no long-term vision of where the hell they're going three years from now. Like three years from now should be all about you're building up this level of talent or these talents here and this is where you want to go with them. This is where you want to take the company. This is how you want to shake shit up. And I feel like you get none of that right now from Tony Khan and AEW. Shame too. Because this is a time of year especially where WWE kind of falls off post-WrestleMania. And then you maybe get to SummerSlam and it picks up a little bit. And then there's football season. This would be the time right now. It would be nice to have a second wrestling company to really get into. But for myself and a couple hundred or a couple hundred other thousand wrestling fans right now, we've just made a decision that AEW isn't it. And you really can't blame us. Because even the hardcore fans, the most die in the world, the ones you might call the AEW cult, they're not even defending this company the same as they once did. They're not sitting there and fighting for them as much as they once did. Because even deep down in the cackles of their heart and soul, they know that shit's not good right now. And it's not going to get good from the looks of it anytime soon. And in three years, we're going to start be talking about AEW in a much different light. And be much less worried about... Hey, just how strong of a viable number two competitor could they be in the wrestling marketplace to what are they going to be in the future and is it going to be really, really bad? The shit's not good. Bottom line, it is time to worry about AEW even more. I know I did a video a few months ago talking about this a little bit. Like This shit's only getting worse. And pretending like it isn't isn't helping the problem. That per that only produces a cocoon of cuck bullshit that further insulates Tony Khan and AEW from fucking reality. It is time for some truth talk here. AEW right now sucks. And it's worse. It's heading down a shitty path. And if you can't see it, I don't know what else to tell you, but in a couple of years, don't be surprised you come back to this video and say, well, he fucking tried to tell you because I did.